I feel like I look like the salsa dancing emoji in the like red dress with this top and the earrings. It's the vibe I'm giving off right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. It's a new video or welcome if you're new here. My name is Hannah. Today's video is something I'm really excited for. A little while ago, I filmed a video called Tier Ranking Every Single Book Series I've Ever Read, and I loved making that video, and you all seem to really enjoy that video as well. And I got plenty of requests to make some more tier ranking videos, and I have like, a hundred different ideas for ones I want to make, even though this trend is like completely dead. I still really want to make some tier ranking videos. So today I had the idea of tier ranking book to movie adaptations. Basically, I'm going to rank every single book to movie adaptation slash book to TV adaptation, basically any adaptation that's come to the screen. I'm going to rank all the ones that I've seen that I can remember. But before we get into the rest of this video, I want to mention that today's video is kindly being sponsored by Function of Beauty. Function of Beauty is a hair care company that offers completely customizable hair care. All you have to do is fill out a super quick quiz that asks you some questions about your hair type and your hair goals and what you're looking for for your hair care. And then you get to choose the color of the shampoo and conditioner that you want. And also you get to choose what name is printed on it. And you can also choose the fragrance or no fragrance. It is also curly and coily hair inclusive, which obviously I deeply appreciate. <laughs> Plus you get to choose a silicone free option, which is what I did because I prefer that for my curly hair. Their products are always free of sulfates, parabens, toxins, and GMOs, and they are cruelty free and vegan. This is the shampoo and conditioner that I chose I choose two different colors because there were a lot of pretty colors and I wanted more than one color. Um, but I really like this like seafoam green and the lavender. I chose the eucalyptus and mint scent. My bottles say Function of Hannah and I really like that you can customize it so much, not only just to meet like your hair needs, but also like visibly, it's really nice. You guys ask me a lot of questions about what products I use in my hair and I'd previously been using other products, but I had been noticing some like damage in my hair and also the fact that my curls had been losing definition. But genuinely, ever since I started using these, my curls have had so much more definition. It's been so nice for my hair. I've actually like genuinely been enjoying my hair because it's actually curly again. And for a while it was just falling flat and getting super frizzy and I have not had that problem with these. They've truly helped my hair so much. One of my main hair goals when I was filling out my quiz was definitely curl definition and that's one of the things that I chose and also moisture because my hair gets very very dry and my hair has been a lot more soft and a lot more moisturized and my curls have had much more definition since I started using these so I am very pleased with the results. They do also offer a subscription service so you can get one for every two, three, or six months which is a really convenient way to get all the products that you need and you can switch up the scents and colors anytime that you want and you're free to cancel it whenever you want to. If you're interested in trying out Function of Beauty for yourself, I have a link in the description box that you can check out to get 20% off of your first order. But yeah, I truly do love this product. So again, a huge thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. Okay, so like I mentioned, today I'm gonna be tier ranking every single book to movie slash TV adaptation I have ever seen. I'm only gonna be ranking movies and TV shows that I have both seen and read the book. I'm really excited so let's just get into it. Okay, so when I initially planned this out, I put in like every single movie that I'd seen, even if it was in like a franchise or something like that. I included all of the movies in the franchise, but honestly, I think it's gonna take me way too long to go through like all seven Harry Potter films, all four Hunger Games movies, all four Twilight films, and like all that. So um, I think I'm just gonna do the first one of each film, unless there's like a specific film that I have like a lot of thoughts on, then I will put that one in a different tier, but I really just don't feel like going through all of them. So they're still in my like list and stuff. So if you wanna do this for yourself with the movies that I've seen, uh, you can go through all of them, but I'm not gonna go through all of them just for the sake of time and because I don't have enough opinions about all of it. So uh, yeah, just wanted to make that clear. But uh, these are the tiers that I ended up coming up with. So I have Better Than the Book, which let's just be honest for a minute, there are some films and adaptations that are better than the book. The book is not always better. We just need to accept that as a society. Sometimes the book is not better. Sometimes they're equally as good as each other, but there are exceptions in which the adaptation improves upon the source material. The book is usually better, let's be honest, but it's not always better. <laughs> so that's why Better Than the Book exists because there are some movies on this list that I love infinitely more than the book. Um, then we have Perfection. And this tier, obviously self-explanatory, but for me, it's like, it's a perfect adaptation. Like it takes the source material and it adapts it as well as you possibly could. Even if I don't love the movie, it is just like the perfect adaptation because there was no other way you could have like adapted this. So that's what Perfection is. And then Wood Rewatch, obviously self-explanatory, good. It's not perfect, but I definitely love to rewatch it. Uh, read the book. This time it's the opposite of Better Than the Book. So. 
I think the book is much better and you should just read the book instead. Uh, and then the next one is just source material because uh, they just didn't follow the source material, which seems to be a very common trend. And then shouldn't exist because let's be honest, there are some movies that just should not exist. Some adaptations that should not have happened for a number of reasons, but we'll get into that. So anyway, those are the tiers. Now let's just get started. The first one I have here is You by Caroline Kepneys, which is actually a book I read years ago. And I really, really loved the book at the time. And I feel like I have to reread it, honestly, to have like more of a solid opinion on it now because it's been so long, but I did really enjoy it then. The show, however, I'm not a huge fan of, in part because of the fact that I feel like people misunderstand the point of it and romanticize Joe, who is a stalker. And people are like, yeah, Joe is the best. He's just a misunderstood nice guy, which is just incorrect. And I'm not saying that the fans of the show are the reason I don't like the show. I'm saying I feel like the show doesn't do a good enough job of making you understand that Joe is the villain of the show. And that's a fault on them. And I feel like the book does a way, 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 way better job, at least in my opinion, of making you understand that Joe is the villain. So I'm gonna put this in source material because I feel like it doesn't understand the book well enough. Yeah, you was just, you was a weird one. I just, I don't, I will never understand why people are like, yes, Joe. Like even Penn Badgley doesn't feel that way. He's like, stop romanticizing Joe. And people are like, but he's so cute. And I'm like, but he's not though, because he's a stalker. <laughs> then next we have To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I love this movie. I think it's such a good adaptation. It's adorable. I love the book series. I think all three of them are fantastic. It's one of my favorite contemporaries, YA contemporaries, honestly. I think it's really, really good. It's heartfelt and it just makes me really happy. And I love the movie too. I've seen it like three times. That's how much I enjoyed it. So I'd put this in would rewatch. I don't think it's a perfect adaptation. I definitely think the book is better, but I would definitely rewatch it. And I clearly have. Next up, we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So the first movie. As we all know, J.K. Rowling is a garbage human being. We're done with her. Society has progressed past the need of, for JK Rowling. I do still love this movie though. In my opinion, this is a perfect adaptation of the book. Compared to all the other Harry Potter films, I think that this one does the best job of actually capturing the essence of the Harry Potter books. It's truly like just such a perfect adaptation. It does everything so well. And it's in part because it is the shortest of all of the books, so it's easier. You have a lot less to condense into a two-hour film, but I still think it does a fantastic job at that. So I I would probably put this in perfection, honestly, like that's how much I enjoy it. And it's a movie I just like to rewatch. And it's also just truly like a perfect adaptation of what the source material is. So yeah, that's where I'm putting that. <laughs> Next up, we have Twilight, which again, I am actually gonna put this in the perfect adaptation <laughs> tier because here's the thing. I hate Twilight, the book series hate them. Loved them when I was like 11, 12, and I was obsessed with the series and I read them religiously, but I cannot stand the books. I literally cannot stand the books. I can't read them anymore because I just can't get through them at this point because that's how bad they are. But the Twilight movie is a perfect adaptation. I would say it's better than the book. It Honestly, in my opinion, at this point, it is better than the book, but it's not on the same level as the other things I have in the tier for better than the book. But it's still such a perfect adaptation. It captures the essence of what Twilight is so well and then improves upon it. The vibe you get from watching that film is exactly what I feel like the vibe Stephanie Meyer like created in Twilight was, or at least she was trying to go for. At least it's what I felt when I was like 11. It's not how I feel now, but the film captured that perfectly and maintained it because I still get that vibe when I'm watching this movie and I like to rewatch it because it's honestly funny. Like that's the thing, like Twilight as a film is perfection for what it is. Like I can't hold it to the, a higher standard and compare it to some other films, but for what it is, it is literally a perfect film. And I can't, I can't argue with that. Despite how I may feel about the books and everything, it's just the perfect adaptation. <laughs> Next up we have 13 Reasons Why, and this easily just goes and shouldn't exist. I hate this show. I hate this show with every fiber of my being. I don't think I've ever hated a show as much as I hate this one. There's some other ones that might come close, but I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. So it's probably 13 Reasons Why. I don't think I've ever watched anything that's worse than 13 Reasons Why. I don't think I've ever regretted watching something as much as I regret watching 13 Reasons Why. So yeah, shouldn't exist. It's awful. It makes me sad that it's so popular. Like I can't, I can't stand it. Anyway, <laughs> then we have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. 
which I like genuinely always forget that this movie exists. Like I truly forget that this movie exists because it wasn't promoted. <laughs> and then the other thing I always forget is that Saoirse Ronan plays the main character, which is so weird because her career is just like wild. For the host, I'm gonna put it in source material because I remember really, really loving the host. I read it like years ago, I was like 12. Um, so it's been like 10 years. 10 plus years? I'm 23. Uh, what are numbers? <laughs> the Host is such a forgettable movie. It's literally so forgettable. The book was super memorable, but the movie was just like bad. The acting was bad. The plot made no sense whatsoever. I just like constantly forget it exists to this day. And it didn't stick to like the main points and like the main message of the book, in my opinion. It was just weird and sci-fi and just trying to be edgy and fit in with every other YA adaptation that was coming out in that time. But it just did not work. It did not work at all. Next up, we have Me Before You, which if you don't know, it's a book that I hate a lot. <laughs> I know a lot of people really liked it, but I do not like it. I also don't like the movie. I don't think this movie should have been made. It was a waste of time in my opinion, because one, the source material wasn't good in the first place, and two, I don't feel like it adapted it well. And the movie's just like not good. Amelia Clark is way better at acting than she is in that movie. And it doesn't like play up to anyone's strengths. The soundtrack was boring and the whole movie just like had such a boring vibe. It was really forgettable. Like the book is worse. It's definitely worse in my opinion. The movie's at least kind of watchable, but like I did not like it. So I'm gonna put this one in, it doesn't really fit in source material because like I don't feel like they veered that far off from the source material. And I don't wanna put it in read the book because like, don't read the book. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in shouldn't exist. Like it's not nearly as bad as 13 Reasons Why. But, like that's not what I'm saying. Um, but I just think it was like a waste of time because like we didn't need this movie. Who even cares about this movie at this point anymore? I don't know, I, that's how I feel. <laughs> Next we have The Hunger Games. And I feel like I disagree with the majority of people on this because I've only seen a few other people who have the same opinion as me. Online, the general consensus is that The Hunger Games movies are incredible, especially The Hunger Games and Catching Fire. People are always like, these are perfect adaptations perfect adaptations, some of the best book to movie adaptations we have. I fundamentally disagree with you. I think the Hunger Games movie is one of the, not worst, but one of the lesser adaptations that we have for YA books. I would easily put it in read the book. I would honestly put it in source material. It's been so long since I've seen it that I don't know if I could say that, but the Hunger Games movies are so much worse than the books. Like you need to read the books. There's no point in watching the Hunger Games movies if you haven't read the books because the books have a message. The movies were made because of capitalism. Like I don't know how else to explain to you that the whole point of the Hunger Games books is about how capitalism is evil and destroying the world. But the movies just like co-opted this message and then turned it on its head and used it for its capitalist agenda. I don't know how much more ironic it could be. Like the whole like franchise, all of the merch and everything that came out when these movies came out, like I was just sitting there laughing the whole time because I was like, you people are the capital. Like this is the capital and I don't understand how you don't understand how this is happening. Like, did you not read the book? Because clearly you didn't read the book. Anyway, I have a lot of feelings about the Hunger Games movies. I feel like I could make an entire like series on why the Hunger Games movies are not as good as you think they are. But anyway, that's a story for another day. This is how I feel about all of them. So again, I'm only gonna be using like the first movie. Um, the first two are way better than the last two. The last two were just like not even good movies, um, but I don't like the movies. Jennifer Lawrence's Katniss, terrible decision. They got rid of PETA and Katniss's disabilities. They just got rid of the most important, essential parts of the book, in my opinion, and just like, made it Hollywood in the worst way possible. For a series that was basically showcasing the worst parts of Hollywood, like that was the point of the first book especially, to have that be the message of your story and then have the films just like not get that and do exactly what the book said that the capital would do, like the irony is just incredible. Anyway, that's how I feel about the Hunger Games movies. Feel free to disagree with me. And to this day, my opinion still stands. Read the book, they're not that good. <laughs> okay, next up, um, we have Eclipse, which this one I am actually gonna do because uh, I have a lot of opinions about Eclipse <laughs> because this movie shouldn't exist, okay? Here's the thing. I don't like the Twilight books, okay? We've, we've covered this, but this movie is so awful. This might be one of the worst movies I have ever seen in terms of it being an adaptation because it's painful to get through. When I walked out of the theater the first time I watched this movie, I came outside, got to the car, and I screamed. I was like, 
13, 14, I don't even know how old I was at this point, but I was screaming because I was so angry at how bad this movie was. Everything about it is awful. The only good thing about this entire movie is the line, face it, I am hotter than you. Nothing else in that movie matters, nothing else. <laughs> All right, next up we have Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. So for this one, I have only read Fellowship of the Ring. I haven't read the other Lord of the Rings books. I know it's technically all one book, but I haven't read Two Towers or Return of the King, but I've seen all the movies and the Lord of the Rings movies are literally some of my favorite movies of all time. I have seen them, I cannot even tell you how many times, I don't know because I used to rewatch them multiple times a year, just back to back to back. Uh, that's how much I love Lord of the Rings. And personally for me, I feel like people are gonna come for me because a lot of fantasy stands disagree. It is better than the book. It's better than the book. I don't like the Lord of the Rings book. I think it's really boring and really long-winded. I don't need that many words. It feels like I'm reading Dickens and we all know how much I don't care about Dickens. <laughs> it's better than the book. It's better than the book. It's more enjoyable. It adapts perfectly to film. It's an exceptional movie. I love the Lord of the Rings movies. They're truly some of my favorite movies ever. They're like my comfort films. I watch them all the time. Um, and yeah, in my opinion, better than the book. I'm sorry if that offends you. <laughs> okay, next up we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which one of my favorite movies of all time. I honestly, I can't say if it's better than the book or not because it's been so long since I've read the book. So I'm gonna put this one in perfection because I love this movie. I will rewatch it over and over and over again. I'm so glad it's on Netflix. I need to rewatch it again, but I love this movie. It's so good. It makes me so happy. It's so sad, but it makes me so happy. Um, and I think it's perfect. I think it's truly a perfect adaptation. I think it understands the source material and then just expands upon that. I think it was directed or it was either the screenplay that was written by the author of the book. So that makes sense because obviously he understands his own book well enough. So yeah, I, I just love this movie. I think it's, it's truly one of my favorite movies ever and I would watch it a thousand times over. Okay, next up we have Fallen by Lauren Kate, which I did not know this movie existed. I literally didn't know this movie existed, but it's so bad. It's literally so bad. But I also don't want to put it in shouldn't exist because like, it's so weird. I don't want to rewatch it though. So like, I don't know where this goes. Maybe I need another tier. No, honestly, I think I'm actually gonna put this in source material because like, yes, it doesn't stick to the source material. And also, yes, the source material is questionable. I think it's just so bad because the source material is so bad. Like, did this movie even come out in theaters? Was it straight to DVD? I have no idea. My friend and I watched it a couple of years ago and that was the first time I'd ever seen it. It's so weird. It's so weird. It feels like a fever dream. So like, I'm putting it in source material because like, I feel like I would watch it again just to laugh at it, but it also confuses me. It's such, such a strange adaptation. I don't understand Fallen. <laughs> okay, so next on my list, I have Divergent. I'm gonna put this in source material as well, because despite the fact that I don't like Divergent as a book, I think it is mediocre at best. The movie is worse than the book. Like it's deeply boring. Shailene Woodley is too old to be Triss, and so is the guy who plays Four. It didn't make any sense, and they're so forgettable. I didn't even watch the rest of the films because I didn't read the other books either, but like, didn't the last movie end up having to be like recast entirely? And wasn't it just like made straight for TV or was it even not made? I have no idea. But like that just goes to show you how poorly this franchise did. But like, it wasn't that great. So I'm not surprised that the movie franchise also kind of died. Okay, next up we have probably my favorite movie of all time. It depends. It's at least like my favorite book to movie adaptation. It's one of two. There are two that are like my all time favorites. And this is one of my all time favorites. And that is Howl's Moving Castle. I love this movie with my whole heart. I've seen it like a thousand times. I could watch it like 50 times in a row and I wouldn't get bored. <laughs> and if you didn't know, yes, it is an adaptation of a book, but personally, I think it's better than the book. I truly think it's better than the book. I think it just fits animation so perfectly well. Like the animation is beautiful. The score, the soundtrack is incredible. Just everything about it makes it so much more magical than the book ever was, in my opinion. And it's perfect. It is very different from the book, actually. But personally, I just think it's a lot better. I think it fits a lot better on screen. And I prefer the story in the movie and the changes that they have in the movie more than I like the um, story in the book. So yeah, for me, it's just it's the perfect film. It's truly the perfect film and one of my favorite adaptations ever. I just think it's so good. So good. I love Howl's Moving Castle. Okay, 
Next up, we have Little Women, which is the new one that just came out last year. I loved this movie. I really didn't think I was gonna care that much about this movie because I like the story of Little Women. I read it when I was a kid, my mom read it to me, and I really enjoyed it, but like it was never my favorite. But this Little Women adaptation just like took me completely by surprise. I cried so many times and I did not think I would. And I love it so deeply. It's so phenomenal. And honestly, I think it's better than the book. It easily became one of my favorite movies. I much prefer watching it to reading the book. I love the changes that they made. You can clearly tell that Greta Gerwig understood the like story of Little Women and understood Louise May Alcott because she'd done so much research on her and she just adapted it so beautifully. It's such a good movie. I loved it. I really didn't think I would like it this much, but I truly, truly love this movie. It's so good and one of my favorites by far. So yeah, in my opinion, honestly better than the book. Okay, next up we have Emma. Um, by Jane Austen. This is the BBC miniseries. I haven't seen the one with Gwyneth Paltrow. There's one with Gwyneth Paltrow, right? I think. <laughs> I haven't seen that one because I don't really care to watch that one, but I love this adaptation. The BBC miniseries is so good. I've seen it like twice or three times. I don't even know. I've watched it many times because I like it that much. I'm gonna put this one in would rewatch because I do like the book better. I love Emma. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite Jane Austen book. It's that in Sense and Sensibility, but I would definitely rewatch this one. I have clearly, and I love it. It's so good. I just think it's a really, really good adaptation. Okay, next up we have Everything Everything. I don't really know where to put this because I don't really like the book. The book is okay, but the concept is like a little bit iffy and like kind of problematic. And the movie, honestly, I think it's better than the book, shockingly, but it's like, also okay. I feel like I just need like an okay tier because there's some of these that like, I don't want you to read the book because I don't think the book is better than the film, but I think I'm just gonna put this in source material because the source material itself was like a little bit iffy. The acting's actually really good and the script for this movie and like visually, it's actually really pretty, but it's just not great to begin with. I need to watch The Sun is Also a Star because I actually love that book um, and I really need to watch the movie because I feel like I might actually like that one since I love the book. So yeah, hopefully that one's better because I love Nicola Yoon, but everything, everything is just not, not, it's not the best. Okay, next up we have Fifty Shades of Grey and like uh, just this shouldn't exist. I, don't ask me why I watched this movie. I was in a dark place <laughs> and I was really bored. I read the book so long ago and it's awful. So the movie is also awful in my opinion. I just don't think Fifty Shades of Grey as a whole should exist. So I don't think the movie should exist. It's not even a good movie. Like even if you like ignore what it came from, it's just like not a good movie. It's poorly acted and poorly filmed. The script's not even good and it's weird. Like not even because of the source material. Like it's just like not a good film. So yeah in my opinion, shouldn't exist. <laughs> okay, I moved some stuff around so that you can see the um, movies that I'm actually gonna keep ranking and I put the other movies and franchises at the bottom. Anyway, next film. We have Pride and Prejudice 2005. It was made in 2005, right? I always think it's 2005 or seven. It's 2005. The one with Keira Knightley. I love this movie. I literally love this movie with my whole heart and soul. This is the other movie that I would say is probably my favorite movie of all time. It's this and Howl's Moving Castle that I think I've watched more than anything else in my life. But in my opinion, personally, and don't come for me, Jane Austen stands, but I think it's better than the book. I love Pride and Prejudice, don't get me wrong. I truly love that book. But this movie understands Pride and Prejudice in the same way that Little Women understands the movie, understands the book. It understands Pride and Prejudice and then just like, elevates it. It's visually so pleasing to watch. The soundtrack is beautiful. I listen to it all the time. The acting is wonderful. Like everything about it is perfect. It is the perfect adaptation. I don't know how else to describe it. Like it's just such a good movie and it makes me so happy. So for me, it is superior to the book of Pride and Prejudice. I love Pride and Prejudice, like I said, but I love this movie with my whole heart and soul. I can watch it a thousand times over again, and I'd much prefer watching it to reading the book. That's how much I like it. So yeah, in my opinion, it is better than the book. Next up, we have The Hobbit. I really love The Hobbit movies, which I know is like a controversial opinion because a lot of people don't like these movies at all, but I personally don't really care that much about The Hobbit book. So for me, I would honestly put this in would re, no, I'm gonna put it in, I don't know. I could even put it in better than the book because honestly for me, it is kind of better than the book, which I feel like people are gonna hate me for saying that. They're gonna be like, you have no taste. <laughs> I enjoy watching these movies so much more than I do reading The Hobbit. Like I just think it's so much more fun. I'm gonna, 
I don't know. I'm gonna put it in would rewatch because all the Lord of the Rings movies I would put in better than the book, even though I haven't read the other two. So like, it's fine. But the Hobbit movies I would put in would rewatch because they're not a perfect adaptation, but they're literally some of my favorite movies and I love rewatching them. So yeah, I would definitely put those in would rewatch. I think, I think that's fair. <laughs> okay, next up we have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And this is easily just source material, source material. Why? Why does this movie exist the way that it does? Nothing about it makes sense. Why are all of them like 25? Like none of it makes sense. I'm so excited for the adaptation that we're getting on Disney Plus. I don't even have Disney Plus, but I will get Disney Plus to watch the Percy Jackson adaptation because I love Percy Jackson. And I'm very excited for that because I feel like it's actually gonna be so good. But this movie, I can't even believe that it exists. It's unreal. I didn't even know a second movie was made for the longest time and I still haven't seen it and I don't plan to. But yeah, the Lightning Thief movie is a wild ride, a wild ride, unbelievable. <laughs> okay, next up we have Series of Unfortunate Events. I really liked this show actually. I thought it was a really good adaptation. I'm gonna put this in Wood Rewatch. It's not as good as the book, but I really liked it. I thought it was really fun. I thought it understood the series really well and played off of that. And yeah, I really, really liked it. So that one's, that one's pretty easy. Okay, next we have Love, Simon, which for me is easily perfection. I love this movie. I have seen it like five times. I, if you couldn't tell, I rewatch things a lot. I rewatch things more than I watch new things, especially when it comes to movies. Like I will just rewatch my favorite movies over and over again before I watch a new movie. It infuriates my sister because she like always wants to show me new movies, but I'll just sit there and rewatch Lord of the Rings for the hundredth time instead. <laughs> but Love, Simon is one of those movies that I've seen a thousand times. I love it so much. I have really good memories attached to it as well because I was invited to like an early screening of the film and stuff. So I got to like experience a lot of like really cool things surrounding the movie too, but it's also just one of my favorite YA adaptations ever. I think it's so good. It's truly, truly so good. It understands the book really well and it takes its own liberties too and it changes things in a way that I think was actually like nice. Some things I wish were more similar to the book. I wish there were some things that they included, but at the same time, I still think it's like an exceptional movie and I would rewatch it any day. <laughs> okay, next up we have Sense and Sensibility, which I love this movie. This is probably, like I said earlier, this and Emma are my two favorite Jane Austen books, but I don't like this movie as much as I like the book for Sense and Sensibility, but I'm gonna put this in would rewatch because I think it's such a good adaptation. It's really such a good adaptation. The cast is unbelievable and it just really gets like the vibe that I get from reading Sense and Sensibility really well. Like it captures its essence really well, I think. That one, that one can go in would rewatch. Okay, next up we have The Fault in Our Stars. I'm gonna put this in source material because like, I don't even love the book that much anymore. I did at the time that this movie came out. I really loved the book. But then when I watched the movie in theaters, I was like, this was not good. I don't like it. <laughs> so I think that it fits in source material very easily because like it didn't stick well enough to it in my opinion. And they were way too old, way too old. This was that era where Shailene Woodley was in like everything. It was so uncomfortable. They were literally like 20 something and they were supposed to be like 15. I don't even remember. And it was uncomfortable to watch, even though I was like 16, 15 at the time that this came out, something around there. And like, I felt like I was watching adults. It was very odd. <laughs> okay, next up we have The Hate You Give. And I'm gonna put this in would rewatch. I don't think it's a perfect adaptation. It definitely leaves too much stuff out, but at the same time, I still think it was a really well done adaptation. Also, I'm a little bit biased because I was invited to be on the set and I got to be like an extra in the movie, which was super cool. But I do really love the movie. When I watched it, I was so pleased with how it turned out because I feel like, again, it kind of captured the essence of the book, even though it still did leave a little bit too much out for my taste. At the same time, it still like understood the source material, which is, my criteria for would rewatch. Um, and I just did enjoy the movie in general. Okay, so next up we have The Maze Runner, which is actually a book that I don't like, but I really, really love this film in part because I love Dylan O'Brien and this came out during the time where I was obsessed with Teen Wolf and I just was obsessed with Dylan O'Brien as well. Mostly I was obsessed with Styles, but I would watch like anything he was in. So of course I watched this movie and then I read the book and I do not like the book, but I really loved this movie. I never watched any of the sequels, but I did really enjoy enjoy the first movie. So I'm actually gonna put this in would rewatch cause I actually really love that movie. Okay, next up we have the Mortal Instruments film, which I, <laughs> I would put this in read the book because the movie's actually kind of fun to rewatch cause it's terrible, but funny terrible. 
but you should just read the book over watching this movie because the movie is really not that good at all and it does not understand the book. <laughs> but I do still have a fun time rewatching this movie from time to time. But then we have to get into the next one because next we have the Shadowhunters TV show, so the second adaptation of the Mortal Instruments. And this one easily goes in source material because like what even is this show? This show is unbelievable. There are things about it that are really funny to watch. Um, I actually really like Magnus and Alec in this show, but I hate the rest of it. I cannot stand 99% of the acting. I don't understand what they did with like the costumes, the CGI, literally everything about it. Shadowhunters feels like a fever dream. I can't believe it's real, honestly. What a show. What a time. <laughs> okay, next up we have the second to all the boys I've loved before movie. And I know I said I was only going to do like the first one of most of these, but this one I have thoughts on, so I wanted to include it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate this movie. I'm going to put this in... I don't know if I should put it in source... I'm going to put it in read the book because it wasn't that bad, but like read the book because... The first one was so good. I really loved the first movie. It was so much fun to watch. The second one, uh, why? Why did they do the things that they did? I, I can't stand it. If you haven't seen it, I don't recommend watching it. I genuinely just recommend reading the books. I'm curious to know what they're gonna do with the third one because I feel like it's not gonna be great because the second one was not great, but the first one was so good. So I was so disappointed in that second movie. So disappointed. I'm still really disappointed and sad about it. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, we have The Great Gatsby, the one with Leonardo DiCaprio. I actually really like this adaptation. I really love The Great Gatsby book. I think it's like one of my favorite classics I've ever read probably. I really, really enjoy it. I've read it like three times, I think, and I don't reread classics that often. So yeah, I really like The Great Gatsby. And this movie I think is really good too. I'm gonna put this one in Wood Rewatch because it's not like a true, true adaptation. It definitely takes a lot of liberties, but I feel like it's a really good modernization. The soundtrack is wonderful. Visually, it's really pleasing. And I think it gets the essence of what the Great Gatsby is about. It is still kind of like Hollywood, but at the same time, I feel like it gets like the glitz and glam covering up the ugly truth that's underneath that the whole, you know, Great Gatsby is about. And I feel like it does that really well visually. Uh, so I really do enjoy that movie and I do like rewatching it. I think it's really fun. But yeah, so that's basically it for my final tier ranking of the um, book to movie adaptations that I have seen. Like I said, again, these ones that are left at the bottom are just the continuation of these franchises that I'm not gonna rank because it's just too many at this point, but feel free to rank them yourself. Um, I'll leave a link to the tier list that I made in the description box below. But I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you have any thoughts on any of the movies that I mentioned in this video, I would love to hear any of them. If there are any other book to movie adaptations that you think I should watch, there are definitely also more book to movie adaptations that I've seen. I just haven't read the books for a lot of those. Like Atonement would definitely be on this list uh, pretty high up there if I were just ranking films that I love, but I just haven't read the books for some of them. So um, if you're wondering why something hasn't been included, that's probably why. But yeah, that is it for this video. So I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media. All my links are in the description box as always, but thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!